It was only a matter of time. I didn't have long. And neither did my wife. My children needed the mother. There was no other option. I needed to go back into the Tinglewood and get her away from that creature, whatever it was. I didn't care what happened to me after that. Aiden and the others will catch up with me eventually. Then just drag me back to trial as intended. Perhaps delivering the creature's head will spare my own. By the way, I pressed on. It was only a matter of time. And I was running out of it. And this is where we meet our main character, Beltran. So if you didn't follow along during the character creation video, that's fine. Basically, we have this character, Beltran, who uh, was a part of a group that was hired to take care of a creature that is living in the desecrated Tanglewood of Milena that has been harassing the town of Redmore, which, interestingly, Beltran has connections to. That's where his family's from, uh, and uh, his group actually failed and all kinds of things happened where we are picking up the pieces here where Beltran is still committed to finalizing the the oath the vow that they had all taken uh, but because he's falsely accused uh, they had pretty much uh, more or less arrested him within their own little party and we're going to be taking him back to the headquarters as a means of uh, a sort of a, a court martial and so this is where we're going to be picking up where Beltran has escaped uh, his, uh, his, his former friends, at least for the moment, uh, because he's so dedicated to it. Uh, I don't actually know which location uh, of these major cities I'd previously established in Willow Vale which is where we are in my version of the Iron Lands. Uh, I don't know where uh, which one of these towns has the headquarters, so I'm just going to roll right now to determine which one of these towns they were dragging Beltran off to, and then that way we can determine which path uh, he might need to take to get back to the Tanglewood because he is committed. Uh, his wife has also been captured and is somewhere in this this forest dungeon, as it were, the uh, the Tanglewood. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roll a d6. So if it's a one or two, that means that uh, the the headquarters are uh, is in Casto. Uh, if it is a three or a four, that means that the headquarters is in Balwick. Or if it's a five or six, that means the headquarters is in Praetin. I mean, I'm leaning towards Praetin anyway, mainly because that would be or functioning like a capital or a, or a really large city uh, in this particular region. Uh, but I'm just going to roll and just see. One. Okay, so that means that they were dragging him back to Casto, uh, which is over this way. Uh, very, very exciting. Okay, so I'm going to then say uh, that he is going to be... Actually, let's just roll a d100. This is going to be the percentage of the way to Casto when he was finally able to escape. So what is the percentage? Wow, 1%. <laughs> that is not what I was expecting. Wow, how about that, huh? Okay. I don't think that makes sense for the story, so I'm going to roll again. I want something. There we go, 48. That's about halfway-ish. Uh, I would think that this looks like more like a path that would be there. Yeah, so I'm going to say 48 means it's leaning towards more on this side. Okay, that <laughs> 1%. Come on, dice. Work with me when I'm trying to tell a story. All right, so we have Beltran who has escaped. And so now he is going to have a... Uh, a journey and so we are going to keep playing so if you have been following along in the other videos that's fine we are playing uh, a solo version of iron sworn which is designed to be played solo or with a couple people uh, you can play with a game master who is guiding the play and so on we're not doing that it's just going to be the dice telling us what to do all right so now that i know our uh, general location let's measure how far back to the Tanglewood here. Okay, 40 miles is about as far as uh, he would need to go as the crow flies. How far was the total drive? Oh, wow. Okay, the whole trip would have been 90-ish miles. So that's, that's several days travel that they're going to be dragging him back. So he was able to escape. 
uh, I, in order to make it a little bit easier for a start, less complicated, uh, I, I'm determining that Beltran was able to escape with uh, his kin blade, which is a very special blade that he has as part of his, his character, but he is just running low on all kinds of things, and so he was able to get what he needed to run, but he's going to probably need to salvage uh, to get some supplies and so on. So let us bring up his character sheet, going to Beltran, load, 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 all right. So we, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's start with the location and figure out uh, what is the sort of place that he is finding himself in uh, where our story will begin. So let us roll for location. Okay, so he comes to a ridge. Let's add a descriptor to that as well. A high ridge. Interesting. Okay, so this is where a uh, potential encounter happens at this high ridge. All right, so let's, uh, let's see how, let's see if he's needing to do, let me close this back down here. If he's needing to do, yeah, 40 miles or so, he'll probably meander, so 40-ish. Yeah, I would say that's probably a, a two-day journey uh, to get back to where he was. What we're going to do, it is undertake a journey. Okay, when you travel across hazardous or unfamiliar lands, set the rank of your journey. Okay. Very good. So what we're going to do, we're going to load up a progress. Here we go. Journey to the Tanglewood. All right. So I'm going to say, because it's a two-day journey... The journey, while in the Tanglewood, is going to be its own tracker and meandering and trying to find stuff. So I'm going to say that this is only going to have a few pieces to it. I would say Troublesome is probably fair. So I'm going to keep it at Troublesome. That way we only have so many uh, modifiers to potentially uh, come up against on his way there. And he is on the run, so maybe one of those modifiers is his his crew catches up to him and uh, and we can just see what happens there. Okay, so let us do our journey. All right, so we are going to be rolling plus wits. And there's going to be no modifier, I think, at this point. All right, what do we get? Uh, that is a miss. Oof. Okay. So starting off on, <laughs> on, a, on, a, uh, on a rough, rough go, but that makes sense. Okay. So what happens here? On a miss, you are waylaid by a perilous event. Pay the price. I already know exactly what would make sense. Uh, and that is that his, his crew has caught up to him. Uh, that has to be, <laughs> that has to be the thing that makes sense that he's waylaid by it. And so, uh, his crew, uh, is known, uh, I used a name generator to determine it and, uh, Let's see. Yeah, so he was a part of the Crimson Circle. I'm still going to pay the price, though, just to see what uh, potential like mechanics need to happen. Uh, but I know that that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, action has unintended effect. That is not as helpful as I was hoping it was going to be. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he's been running. And I'm going to say that uh, we've probably had a storm come through over the last uh, amount of time since he left. Aiden comes to this this high ridge, this high cliff, as he's going to need to find a way to make his way down. Um, I tell you what, because of the layout here, let's say he ran the wrong direction for a bit <laughs> there. So we'll say that he is a little bit more north where you have potential for some ridges and forests and stuff. So he's going to be trying to uh, find his way that way. And you have a storm coming through, you have rolling thunder, you have some rain, he's tired, but sure enough, uh, his his uh, former friends within the Crimson Circle catch up to him. Uh, and uh, I had uh, rolled a couple names just ahead of time, so we have, uh, for example... Uh, his his friend Aiden, uh, but also you have Lieutenant Erelem and uh, the captain of the Crimson Circle, Galadan. And so what I'm thinking happened is when they went in to the, the Tanglewood the first time, something happened. They're all really confused about what uh, is was was happening and unfortunately the captain uh possibly among a couple others were actually killed uh and beltran has been falsely accused of being the one to do it 
Uh, and uh, so I think as Beltran is standing over and at the edge of this high ridge, looking down, trying to determine uh, his next steps, he could hear the hooves of the horses uh, pounding on, on the ground behind him. And unfortunately, it was too late. They saw him, they could see him, and uh, they have surrounded him. And I will say that that the Lieutenant, Erelem, uh, calls out to him, saying, Beltran, that is far enough. Beltran stops, and he turns, and he sees the crimson circle surrounding him. My wife is still in there. You can do what you want to me. But we have a vow to fulfill. I think Beltran is going to uh, try and compel uh, his his former crew to uh, actually finish the job. Help him, at least on, on behalf of his wife and his children. Uh, I think that's going to be the route that he's going to go with. Uh, so this is where you go to relationship moves. I'm going to go to compel. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say he's going to try that charm barter convince. So it's going to definitely be um, heart. I think he's going to try and compel the lieutenant first. And if that doesn't work, then he's going to try and compel Aiden to help him. Uh, all right, let's see. So he's going to roll with heart. And is there a modifier? No. Oh, this is not going well <laughs> at all. Okay, so he fails there. So on a miss, they refuse or make a demand which costs you greatly. I think... Uh, Arlem will respond. Yes, I suppose we could do that, but you should still be bound. I think uh, we are willing to take you along back into the Tanglewood, but only if you are willing to wear bindings. So we know that you don't try and stab any one of us in the back, like you did to the captain. I told you. I didn't do it. I saw it with my own eyes. So he's going to turn. He will look at Aiden. Aiden, who has very stern expression, very grave. Rain is pouring down. Aiden, please. This is Becca. This is for my children. All right, so he is going to try and compel Aiden uh, to... Yeah, I think he's going to compel Aiden uh, to to help or at least chime in, be on his side here. Because he does have a bond with Aiden, he gets a plus one to the roll. Hopefully that will mean the difference. Hey, we hit first success of the game. Isn't that exciting? Uh, all right, so it is a weak hit. As above, but they ask something of you in return. Envision what they want. Okay, so... so Aiden would would look at the lieutenant who's now effectively the captain of the Crimson Circle and uh, he probably chime in and say something like come on lieutenant we we do have a job we still need to complete I mean to be fair we've also I mean we've worked with with Beltran for a long time Yes, but cowardice can get the best of all of us at times, it seems. I tell you what, how about we handle this the old way? If I win, you follow my rules. If you win, you can lead us back into the Tanglewood with no bindings. The old way, that would be through a, a feat of arms. This is a duel, a challenge to a duel. And so uh, I'm going to say that, uh, that Beltran is committed enough uh, to go back into this dungeon with whatever this creature is that he is going to accept. So what we're going to do, we are going to draw the circle. 
this is uh, this is how this is going to be. So he's going to accept the challenge. Uh, he does not share a bond with this particular community, so he is not going to be able to add that plus one bonus. All right, let's uh, let's see how this goes. No modifier. Here we go. Strong hit. Let's go. We have a good momentum here. Okay, on a strong hit, you gain you take one momentum. Beautiful. Uh, let's see. You start at two, so that bumps him up to three. Uh, you may also choose up to two boasts and take one momentum for each. Okay, so which of these boasts would be fair? I think he's going to need momentum for this in order to uh, <laughs> to survive either this this duel or uh, to make it to make it work here. So either he can grant first strike to the lieutenant which means that the foe initially has initiative and uh, he that'll immediately put Beltran on the defensive. He could bear himself, take no benefit of armor or shield. Your foe's harm is plus one. Oof. Hold no iron, take no benefit of weapons. Oof, okay. Bloody yourself. Oh, it's kind of like a terrifying thing. Okay, interesting. To the death. Ooh. Okay. I don't think this is something that he would want to do to the death. Because I think he would still want to have some sort of options in the future to to at least participate and help, even if he's wearing bindings. Maybe later on he could take those off. So I don't think he would do it to the death. Uh, I think he will grant first strike as a as a means of showing his commitment. So he will take an extra momentum for granting first strike. Okay, so let's see. Lieutenant, how difficult of a fight should this be? Okay. I think Lieutenant is at least dangerous. He might be formidable, but I think uh, because they're not trying to kill each other, they're going to be both kind of holding back a little bit. Um, not a lot, but at least enough to to get to this point. Yeah, so I'm going to say it's dangerous. I think that is going to be the level of this combat here. Okay, so that means that uh, we are at the the start of it. So that challenge has, has begun. Normally you would enter the fray when you start combat, um, but that is what determines who has initiative and so on. That is actually not necessary. That is replaced by the draw the circle move. So we already know that Lieutenant uh, has the the initiative. I think he's just going to face danger. So he's just going to take it as a, as a defensive thing and not try to counterattack, truly allow for first strike. I think that is how that is going to function. So as is customary with the old way. You have some lightning flashes, rain is pouring down your, uh, the, the sound of the water bouncing off of uh, the different pieces of armor. I'm gonna say that uh, some of the members are wearing uh, plate armor, maybe pauldrons. Others are wearing mail or, or uh, you know, leather reinforced, uh, maybe uh, different like thick cloths and so on. Rain's just coming down and uh, both, uh, both the lieutenant and Beltran draw their swords, stick it in the ground, and then facing each other, they start walking, dragging the sword around and until they each meet each other's drawn line. And now you have the circle. And then the other members of the Crimson Circle come together and uh, they all stand at, at the, the perimeter of this circle and Aiden with a little flourish gives his nod and the lieutenant takes up his uh, his sword and he charges and this is where we roll to face danger so uh, I think he's just going to try and take it so I think he's going to roll iron uh, just to try and endure this particular thing. He's not going to have any extra modifier or bonus to this roll. Okay, a weak hit. So on a weak hit, uh, let's see. 
You succeed but face a troublesome cost. So you are delayed, lose advantage, or face a new danger. Suffer one momentum. You are tired or hurt, and you endure one harm. You are dispirited or afraid. Sacrifice resources. I think because this is combat, it makes sense that he's going to endure one harm. So he's going to go from five down to four as a part of that harm. Um, let's see if there's anything else that we want to do in terms of the endure harm move. Okay, I think I have to roll this anyway as I'm looking at this. Roll health or iron, whichever is higher. So health is at four. Iron, pretty sure, is at three. Yeah. So we are going to roll health. Strong hit. Love it. Um, strong hit can shake it off. Ooh. I could lose one of those momentums I just spent in order to get my health back. Or I could embrace the pain and gain another momentum. You know what? I think he's going to need to survive, so I'm going to lose a momentum. I'm going to spend that in order to uh, be back up to my, my five health here. So he endured it, and uh, then that is what, what happens here. Okay, so he doesn't have initiative yet. He didn't roll well enough in order to take that initiative. So the rain's pouring down. The circle has been formed. Lieutenant charges, makes his attack. And, and he lands a hit, uh, but Beltran uh, is able to roll with it, and sure enough, his his clothing got a got a cut on it. Uh, but he seems unfazed by this uh, by this attack, and so the lieutenant charges again. This time, I think. Um, I think he is going to try and counterattack. He's honorable, but the lieutenant has made his his first strike, and so and because of that, uh, on the defensive, Beltran is going to use the clash move, the clash move. And so uh, here we go. He's going to roll iron. Doesn't get a benefit against him. Ooh. Oh, oh, this is great. Okay, so this is not only a strong hit, but this is also, uh, you'll notice that there are doubles that were rolled on the D10s. That makes it a critical success or allows for an additional benefit to arise. So let's just handle the strong hit portion first. Inflict harm, and I choose one. You have the initiative, which is great, and then you can bolter position or you can find an opening so i think he's going to inflict an extra harm uh even though he's not trying to kill him he, they are using deadly weapons he's trying to end the fight quickly uh so here we go we are going to uh go ahead and mark our progress now because he's using a deadly weapon he gets a base of two harm and so he gets to have an extra one and so he deals damage per harm so i get to mark three one two three for the three harm that he is dealing. Uh, let's double check his assets, because I'm pretty sure uh, Ukamas does not have the, the extra items uh, available unlocked yet. And he's not burning momentum, uh, so we are good on Swordmaster. Forgot to have him do his magic stuff, but that's okay. He's probably tired. He doesn't have that drawn in, and it might be considered uh, dishonorable to use magic in a pure dual situation so i think that's uh i think that's fair all right so as part of uh the success of the role i did also get an opportunity uh which is a a bonus something extra an unexpected uh you know good thing now i'm gonna try something under the delve moves i'm gonna see if there is a, an opportunity that I can draw and see if that is, you know, is helpful and, and gives any ideas here. Train favors you or you find a hidden path. Train favor sounds great. So I'm going to say that what that means is for his next move, he gets a plus one because he's been able to maneuver around uh, in such a way that he's going to be able to, to do well. So I think he's going to turn around and he's going to do another hit with a plus one to try and finish the move here so in this t in this case he is going to strike and uh yeah so when you have initiative and attack in close quarters this is exactly what he's doing so he's going to go ahead and roll with iron and he is getting a plus one because of that terrain advantage and he's going to hit uh let's see 
That is a weak hit. Okay, and a weak hit, you inflict your harm, but you lose initiative. Okay, so normal harm. So I'm going to go back to my progress. Uh, he's going to mark that. We're getting pretty close. Getting close to uh, to how this uh, how this fight can be. I could try and end it, but he'll need to take the uh, the initiative at some point. The lieutenant swirls around and uh, and charges, and then I think uh, that is going to catch. I think that's going to catch Beltran off guard a little bit. Uh, so he is, I think, not going to be able to try and do a, a counter. So I think he's going to just do a face danger, and he's doing so with iron. I think uh, he no longer has that, that benefit of the terrain. I think it was just for that one move. I'll hit submit. Okay. Strong hit. He was successful in avoiding that danger, and he'll be able to take a momentum, which is great. And also, as a part of the strong hit, that means he has also taken the initiative. This is very good news for him. Okay. So what I think he's going to do, now that he has the initiative. Um, I think he's going to try and uh, make a move to take that decisive action and end it. I think uh, because he had such a, a successful dodge, I think he's going to try and get into maneuver to, to force and compel the lieutenant to stand down and admit defeat. So I could try and do maybe one more hit to increase my my likelihood of success, but I think 8 out of 10 is, uh, is pretty good. Now, normally, you have to always roll below the action score, uh, but as a reminder, I'm going to be playing with uh, modified rules that it's uh, equal to or greater is what you want. Uh, in the case of a progress move, my modification is that you cannot have greater than 9 out of your 10 points on a progress move. That way you still have possibility of failing, but you're pretty much maxed out is kind of the idea. So let's try and end the fight. And we are looking at my filled progress, which was 8. Okay, so that is a weak hit. So on a weak hit, as above, okay, so the foe is no longer in the fight, uh, or so they are able to surrender, but I must also choose one. It's either I, it's worse than I thought, overcome, so I endure stress, victory short-lived, suffer collateral damage, ooh, you'll pay for it, objective falls out of reach, others won't forget you're marked for vengeance, ooh, ooh, this... Lieutenant seems to, to be a bit of a, a growing villain and is really, really diving into that according to what the dice are saying. So I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think you have been, I think he has been marked for vengeance because he has been shown up in front of the whole uh, group, the entire Crimson Circle who remain. And uh, so, yeah, he's able, after all of this moving and dodging, the duel goes pretty quick. There's only a few rounds, a few uh, swipes of the blades, as it were. And sure enough, he comes up in such a way, blade right up to his neck. All right, surrender. This is how it's going to be. Fine, you may have your way. But know that I'm watching you closely, betrayer. Hopefully... I'll prove myself to you in more ways than just this. Removes the blade from his neck. And it's decided that uh, the rest of the Crimson Circle is going to travel with him to the Tanglewood uh, and uh, see what they can do. Now, he's not going to be bound anymore. They're going to just try again. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Oh, and that is all the time that we have for this episode. But Beltran has earned the assistance of the Crimson Circle as he seeks to rescue his wife. But uh, he has now been marked for vengeance by the lieutenant. How does that bode for the rest of his journey? I have no idea. I guess we'll have to wait and see and find out in the next episode, which I should be posting over my face at some point once that is up. But uh, until then, see you next time.